And now to our lab. Whoa! Where we do incredible experiments. Oh, looks disgusting. To show you how your body works. So watch this. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Vomit. What makes our bodies do it and why? Well, we're doctors and we can tell you. Can I get it now? Hang on. Being sick is your body's mechanism for getting rid of stuff it doesn't want, often because there's a bad bacteria or virus in your stomach. So that's the simple answer to why we puke, although it's a bit more complicated. Now can I get it? Hang on. But what's vomit actually made of? And what goes on inside our bodies to prepare us for this massive event? Now can I get it? Oh, go on then. Let's see Chris's lunch. This is my sick. Oh, Chris, that's awful. Don't worry, I'm not ill. There is still food in there. That's because when you're sick from your stomach, it's not choosy. You bring up everything to try and get rid of that bad bacteria or virus. So what your stomach ejects is all the food and drink you've taken in in one go. But there is another ingredient in vomit. Azanda, I want you to close your eyes and imagine you're in a really posh Italian restaurant. Now, don't you think my vomit smells a bit like cheese? And that's because when food is broken down in your stomach, it makes butyric acid. The acid is produced by bacteria as it eats away at your food, and the same bacterial process occurs as cheese ages. Which is why older cheeses like Parmesan smell a little bit like vomit. Just as well Chris hadn't been eating Parmesan or his vomit would smell much worse. Enough already. Now, I've got something even better than a tub of my own vomit. Apart from it being really unpleasant when you're sick, there are real dangers of your vomit spreading a virus. And it can lead to an epidemic, just like the winter vomiting bug, norovirus. But how can vomit spread viruses? This is Larry. He's a robot, but he's not just any old robot, he's a vomiting robot. Larry's been specially designed to show us how the virus can spread to other people when we vomit. So, I've given Larry a big drink and he's going to vomit into this container. If he's ill, shouldn't he just stick to dry toast or something? And ready to puke in three, two, one... <laughs> that was really powerful. It's amazing. That might look like a much more powerful puke than a human would do, but in fact there are things like norovirus that do make you projectile vomit. It's lucky we had such a big container. I think we've caught it all. Well, we can check that, Zahn, because I put a fluorescent dye in the liquid that I made Larry drink. Do you think that's what made him sick? Hmm. No, I think turning the knob made him sick. He's a robot, Zand. So, I'm going to go and turn on the ultraviolet lights and we'll see if any of the splashes of vomit escaped. So, there's loads in the container. You can see it really well. You look outside the container, see how much there is here. Yeah, there's loads. And then over here where I am, there's even more. These are big, big drops. Some of them are more than two metres away from Larry. Look, Zand, it's even on you. Oh, yeah. It's all over me. It's just amazing how much mess he's made. Well, this is exactly why Larry was invented, to show just how far drops of vomit can spread. And remember, each one of these splashes has enough virus in it to make you seriously ill. So remember, if you're being sick yourself or you're looking after someone who's sick, it's really important to wash the whole area really carefully and wash your hands with soap and water to stop spreading the virus on. But it's not all bad news. Vomiting can sometimes be your way of getting rid of things that are harmful. This never would have happened if we'd just given him dry toast. Ouch. This is our lab, where we're going to do some incredible body experiments. Ah, that really hurt. Just don't try any of this at home. Today, it's muscles. Meet Tiny from Tottenham. Yeah, we've already met. Tiny, put my brother down. Go on, mate, let me down. <laughs> You've got a lot of muscle. Can we have a look at your biceps? Not Chris, not you. How big is that bicep? 24 inches. 24 inches, so that's 61 centimetres. That's amazing. So Tiny's bicep is probably bigger than your waist. Tiny's muscles are big and very, very strong. But what are they made of? 
Well, your muscles are made up of fibers formed from millions of individual cells, and blood vessels deliver the energy that your muscles need in order to move. Now, a single muscle fiber on its own isn't very strong, but when you gather a bunch of them together, they become much more powerful. But Tiny doesn't have any more muscle cells than Chris. So how did Tiny's muscles get so big? Tiny, how have your muscles got so big and strong? I've been training for 15 years. The only day I don't train is Christmas Day because the gym's shut. I don't train on Christmas Day. <laughs> right, so when Tiny goes to the gym and lifts weights, what happens is the heavy weight causes small tears in the muscle fibers, and that stimulates his body to build those fibers back bigger and stronger than before. That's how his muscles got so big and strong. Tiny. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in today. Ah, oh, Chris, <laughs> never be cheeky to a man called Tiny. So, how do our muscles actually work? Your brain controls your muscles by sending a small electrical charge down a nerve to the muscle. That tells the muscle to move. But what happens when we take control away from the brain and stimulate the muscle directly with these electrodes? I'm attaching electricity conducting pads to Chris's arms. When I press these buttons, electrical charges are sent directly to his muscles, which will make his arms move. See? That was me. Now let's see how many beakers Chris can down while I try to override his brain and control his muscles. OK, Chris, 15 glasses, 30 seconds. Now remember, I'm in control. You've got to drink as much as you can. Right, you ready? No problem. Go. <laughs> Chris is struggling because whilst his brain is sending electrical charges to move his muscles correctly, I'm interfering by sending my own electric charges. With these opposing charges fighting each other, Chris's coordination is all over the place. I'll let go of it. There we go. Oh. <laughs> you, can't, you can't, you cannot let go. No, right? Just put it down. Just no, I've got it. <laughs> Yeah, you, 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 I'm pretty I well, only two left. <laughs> <laughs> so we've shown that you can override the brain using these electrodes, but not very successfully. The brain is really important for coordination of muscles. You did really well, Chris. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>